This is a 1997 Toyota Hiace Super Custom Living Saloon, or as I like to call it, the JDM Shag Wagon. This particular one has three moon roofs and a sunroof. I don't really know the difference between the two, and it doesn't matter because you can see the stars. It also has the same 3 liter turbo diesel from the Land Cruiser driving only the rear wheels. While the rest of the world was fleeing their minivan overlords for the warm embrace of the crossover SUV, Japan was embracing the box, making one of the most incredible vans of all time. We'll get into the details in a second, but I want to first try to explain the mindset behind these vehicles as I feel it's important to know their place in Japan as it's fundamentally different from how you may have been raised to think of a minivan. The highest is the Silverado or F-150 of Japan. The vast majority of high aces sold are base level company vans that get used to haul manual labor supplies or turned into transport vehicles. It is a workhorse vehicle, but like its American counterparts, it also is offered in a much higher trim to the consumer. The options were absurd. This van came in 13 different engines. Hot tea makers, refrigerators, tables, hot can drink heaters, air ionizers, and I believe even karaoke booths were all available from the factory. They got a few facelifts with a big one in 1997, which I believe makes this one a Koki or a post facelift. Unfortunately, it also means it lost some of the extra mm, sauce that the older versions had available. No shelf on a dashboard, for example, that's now an airbag. The seats change to be less sofa-like and more van-like. It's still dope, though. It also doesn't have any of the fancier amenities like the power curtains and hot water kettle, but I'm not sure if that's related to the facelift or not. Typically, the four-wheel drive turbo diesel is the most desired version of this van. However, I bought the rear-wheel drive version specifically because it comes with 5x114 hubs. You've heard of people buying wheels to match the car? Well, I've gone and bought the car to match the wheels. I want to put Workmeister Zeiss ST2s on this bad boy, money willing. I'm also going to do a full body kit and paint to offset the wheels, but that's a dream that gets a little farther away every time I have another kid. <laughs> Added bonus, the top spec rear wheel drive version is significantly cheaper than a more desired four wheel drive version, and it still has all the VIP potential. Most Americans buying these vans want to lift them and overland them on knobbies. I want to go for a more Japanese style and make it like a luxurious Yakuza wagon. High aces in Japan that aren't used as company cars are often used to haul motorcycles. This has created a stereotype of sorts, that they're Yankee cars. No, I'm not talking about the slang towards Americans, I'm talking about a certain lifestyle in Japan from the 80s and 90s. I'm pretty sure it's offensive, but the perception is if you're a little rough around the edges, dye your hair blonde, don't fit into the salaryman mold, wear piercings and tattoos, and maybe got into a few fights as a kid, you might drive this land high ace when you grow up. Or maybe an Alford. Toyota seemed to notice the van has four cup holders and six ashtrays. Mine still had some leftover cigarettes gifted by the previous owner. I feel like this is a fading stereotype, but it is important to know because it paints a picture of how these vans fit into the car scene and carry a very different perception than your average minivan in a western country. Okay, so now that we understand the cultural background of these vans, let's talk about this one. This van has a 3 liter 1KZ turbo diesel engine making roughly 130 horsepower and 240 foot pounds of torque at 3600 RPM. I bought it with 94,000 kilometers on it which is about 58,000 miles. Not bad for a 97, even better when the engines are typically good for 500 to 700,000 kilometers. It's rear wheel drive with an open differential so while it can do burnouts it's a bit of a one wheel wonder. By Japanese standards this van is massive but in reality its dimensions are smaller than a Tacoma. It seats 8 people, 2 up front over the engine, 6 in the back via 2 benches or a bench captain chair combo. This one has the captain's chair, which is cool, but regrettably means that the front row can only turn backwards, not sideways like the bench can. However, the seats turning around backwards is pretty much 80% of the reason why I bought this thing. It completely changed the dynamics of the vehicle, and it wasn't uncommon in the 90s in Japan. Unfortunately, such luxury can't be had these days due to safety loss. So if you want seats to turn around backwards in a minivan, you're going to have to go pre-2000s. The back bench can slide flush to the rear hatch for maximum passenger space, or flush to the front bench for maximum storage space. I just wish it could fold up on the sides like more modern vans, but that would probably require it be broken into two seats. The living saloon is one of the highest specs that can be had. Mine doesn't seem to have power curtains though, so you have to close them yourself when you want only a little privacy. It does have the same electronic control transmission technology that my Celsius had. You can check out that video here, and that allows you to switch to a power mode, keeping the gears low for more torque, but it is a diesel engine, so it's kind of torquey anyway. It came with suede base seats and wood trim, something I'm trying to add to with aftermarket shelving. Admittedly, matching wood is never easy even fake wood. It also has retractable mirrors, automatic headlights, and the Zinke, or the earlier version, had a 3D dash. Very Blade Runner, but also looked like a nightmare if something went wrong, so I specifically bought a newer one. Lighting. The cabin has quite a bit of lighting. I replaced all the OEM bulbs with warm LEDs, which I think plays off the colors of the fabric quite nicely. It also has a house style fluorescent light in the center. Admittedly, it didn't age well, and I reckon it's not easy to replace that bulb. So I would love to replace it with something a bit more modern. I appreciate the puddle light on the sliding door as well, that's very helpful at night. So far I haven't found any floor mats for the van that are better than the OEM Shag-esque option, so there's no plans to change them as of yet. The moves can be controlled in the back or up front by the driver, and I imagine those controls are a big reason why it would be difficult to replace the center light. 
I've had this fan for about six months now, and I've put nearly 20,000 kilometers on it. It's honestly been an incredible asset here in Okinawa. With young kids and an infant, being able to pull the curtains and lay the bed down for a diaper change or a feeding is a huge boon when you're out and about. Keeping the sun out also helps the AC control the temperature better despite it being a significant volume of space. The Skyline Super Craze has blossomed to a larger JDM craze, and more people are learning about JDM van culture. That makes these vans an appreciating asset, and I think you'll start seeing more of them in the States soon. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. There's a chandelier in there. <laughs>